What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn how to measure text similarity using natural language processing in Python. So let us get right into it. Alright, now for this video today we're going to use an external Python library called Spacey and Spacey is essentially a simple and easy to use natural language processing library that has a lot of different functionalities and one of those functionalities is to compare or to measure the similarity between texts or also individual words. And in order to use Spacey we first need to install it so we open up a command line and we type pip install Spacey like this and one more thing that we need to do here is we need to also install a so-called language model. Because when we analyze text, when we want to compare similarity, when we want to do any natural language processing, we need to have a basic understanding of the language, the machine that we use, the computer needs to have a basic understanding of the language. And for that, we need a so called language model. So we need to install such a language model for Spacey. And for that, we type Python. And on Mac and Linux, usually you type Python 3 dash M Spacey download and then uh, the name of the language model you can google if you want to use a different one but i'm going to use or we're going to use for today's video en underscore core underscore web underscore lg now lg stands for large you can also download md for medium or sm for small but we're going to download large today so this is a 400 megabyte language model that we're going to use in spacey i'm not going to run this now because i already have this installed and as i said 400 megabytes so it takes some time to download you just run this command and it's going to download the respective language mo uh, language model and then we can start with the coding now for today's video i'm going to use a jupyter notebook however don't feel obligated to use one as well you can use the python idle you can use a simple notepad you can use pycharm code in whatever you want i'm just more comfortable using individual code cells here so i'm going to start by importing spacey here and we're going to create a so-called nlp object or actually it's not an nlp object but in documentation and in tutorials you always see in spacey uh, when you use spacey you use the nlp name here so nlp is going to be equal to spacey a load and then we're going to load the model that we just installed which is en core web lg and then we can use this nlp object to do all sorts of natural language processing things and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to compare two simple words in terms of similarity so we're going to say w1 equals for example red which is a color and w2 is going to be equal to uh, walking for example which is a verb describing someone walking um, and in order to compare the similarity we need to turn those two words those two strings into nlp objects so into spacey objects and for that we're going to say w1 equals nlp vocab so vocabulary uh, and we're going to use from the dictionary here we're going to access w1 and w2 now i think that this won't work if we're using a word that doesn't exist i'm not sure if this is going to throw an exception no actually not so basically it's just gonna uh, be ineffective but now in order to compare the similarity between between red and walking what we do is we say w1 dot similarity w2 like that and you can see this gives us 0 0.29 uh, which is 29% basically because the maximum number that you can have here is one if I change this to red as well So it's the exact same word. This has a similarity of 1.0. So exactly one um, And walking has 0 0.29. So zero would be the lowest. I don't think that you can actually end up with zero I'm not sure uh, But we can see that this changes to a higher value if I change walking to color for example so red and color are more similar they have a similarity of 0 0.59 but color is a, a more abstract term and red is a concrete color so maybe it's even closer or more similar to a yellow and you can see that this is true because 0 0.83 is higher and red and yellow are both colors now i think that if we choose a different color it might actually end up being a different uh, similarity i'm not sure what this would be based on maybe length of the word or maybe similar characters i'm not sure but i think blue is actually higher similarity to red than yellow um, i'm not sure if this is because of the closeness of the rgb values i don't think so uh, but you can see that two colors are uh, pretty similar even though from the characters they're not very similar and you can see that this is true that this library actually compares the similarity of the meaning when you use words like weather and weather 
because those two words are pronounced basically the same. They have very, very similar characters and they're equally long. So they're completely similar in terms of just looking at them, pronouncing them and whatever, but they have a completely different meaning. And you can see that then the similarity is 0 0.25 not very high, saying that those two words are not similar, which is very useful because oftentimes in machine learning, we want to extract from certain texts, certain information, and we don't want to know if two words are similar based on their characters, because we can calculate that on our own easily, we want to know the meaning behind the words. And you can see that the meaning is not very similar here. However, if I change the word two here to sunny, you can see that the similarity is higher. If I change it to rainy, it's also higher. And if I compare sunny and rainy, it's the highest. So this is how you compare individual words. Now you can also I think do this by not using vocab, I think you can do the same thing by just calling NLP uh, word one, and NLP word two. And this produces basically uh, almost the same result. For some reason, the similarity changed but it doesn't really matter. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna do the same thing with sentences and with longer uh, portions of text. So we cannot do this just with a single word, we can do this with uh, different sentences as well. And I have prepared a couple of sentences here, at least um, to some degree, we don't have to type them exactly the way I type them. But for example, if in the God of the Bible, is just a sample sentence. Don't take this as a religious statement here. Uh, and then we have I trust in a higher power of Christianity. And you can see that the sentences here are very similar in the meaning, but they have different words. We have belief, we have trust, we have higher power, we have God and we have Bible and Christianity. And let's go with sentence three NLP. <clears throat> this weekend, John will drink a beer. And now what we can do is we can say s one similarity s two. And you can see this is a very high similarity 0 0.88. Uh, if I go s one similarity s three, for some reason, this is also a very high similarity. But you can see that this is a way higher similarity. So I think um, as far as I remember, for sentences, you basically have higher uh, values if um, by default, unless they're completely different, let's see if s two similarity, s three is higher or lower. It's lower, but you can still see that the highest similarities between those two sentences here, I believe in the God of the Bible, and I trust in a higher power of Christianity, which is essentially basically the same sentence uh, in terms of meaning, but not in terms of uh, the characters or words used. So what else do I have here? Um, let, let's go through a couple of examples. Let's change this here to I don't know whether I want you. This is not the weather for it. I warned you. So basically, those two sentences are similar in some degree, uh, because weather and weather and I want you I warned you sounds kind of similar, but a different meaning. Uh, and then we have today is an awful rainy day. And I told you so. And now we can do the same thing here. And you can see that the highest similarity is between two and three because we have weather. And uh, I warned you and awful rainy day and I told you so so you can see a very high similarity. Um, and for the other sentences, you have some similarity. I mean, you also have a similarity because the sentences are basically telling uh, I want you the I character does something in with respect to you. And I want you as the I character does something with respect to you. So there is a similarity in the meaning. But of course, those two sentences are very, very similar, which you can see here in the similarity score. Alright, so last but not least, I want to show you how we can take specific portions of the individual text specific parts of the individual texts, and compare them in terms of similarity. For example, we might have three different texts, and we might want to only compare the adjectives or only compare the verbs or only compare the nouns in terms of similarity. 
And this can also be done with the NLP object with the spacey module. And for that, we're going to change the sentences. We're going to have the sentence, I play football in this awful arena. Or I play the piano in this red room. And last but not least, I repair the piano in this ugly room. So you can see now that, for example, those two sentences have the same nouns. We have room, room, piano, piano. So it's going to be exactly the same nouns here, but we have different verbs. We have play and repair, and we have different adjectives, red and ugly. So sometimes you might want to, you might have a data set with some text and you might want to extract, okay, what's the topic that is talked about? Maybe we want to know, okay, what are the nouns that are talked about? And in this case, we have pianos and rooms, which is uh, the exact same thing. So we might want to filter out all the sentences that uh, are about something like pianos or rooms. And then we might want to know, okay, what is the action that is uh, taken in those texts? So here something is played, here something is repaired. And if we want to do that, we can use spacey as well. So we can do something like um, s1 underscore verbs, for example, would be uh, a space, a white space join, and we're going to say here, list comprehension token dot lemma underscore for token in s1 if token dot pos equals verb like that. So we take for each token that we have here in s1, if it's a verb, we're going to take this into this list and one, we're going to join that list into uh, the S1 verbs variable. So S1 verbs will end up looking like this. Uh, now, what did I do wrong here? I have to have messed up something because actually it should work. Token lemma for token in S1 if token position, oh, position underscore, pause underscore like that. And then we have play here. Um, and now we can do the same thing with nouns and adjectives. So I can say S1 adjectives and S1 nouns is going to be equal to the same thing, adjectives and noun like that. And then I can say S1 adjectives, awful, and S1 nouns is football arena. Um, so not football arena, but football and arena. So we can then copy this and do the same thing for S2. And the same thing for S3. And then we have all the different verbs, adjectives and nouns. And now all we need to do here is we can craft a bunch of sentences, print F string and then uh, S1 and S2 verbs have, and then we say NLP S1 verbs, because we need to convert this string here also into an NLP object, into a spacey object dot similarity NLP S2 verbs. Like that. And then you can see here, I play football in this awful arena and I play piano in this red room, verbs 1.0. Because play and play is the exact same verb. So this is a similarity of 1.0. Let me just zoom out a little bit. And we can do the same thing now with uh, all sorts of things. So we can compare S1, S2, S1, 1s3 and s2 s3 here as well. Now, of course, we need to change this here then as well. So three and two. And then you can see here that those two don't have a high similarity. And of course, this is now a very simplistic example, because we only have one verb here. Uh, but imagine you have a very long text, you have three very long texts. And if you have a lot of different sentences with a lot of different verbs, nouns and adjectives, this will give you a more clear example of which sentences, which texts 
are in general quite similar and uh, about the same things uh, in terms of nouns, verbs, and uh, adjectives. Because sometimes, you know, um, we can talk all day long about playing something. The one person could be talking about video games. The one person could be talking about sports. Um, and this will be in terms of, of verbs. This will be almost the same thing. So we're going to have a very high similarity, but the nouns are then going to be football and ball and throwing or clicking and counter strike or whatever. So this makes sense to split it up sometimes. Now let's take this and also do the same thing in terms of adjectives. There you go. And we need to change this here to adjectives. Come on. And then you can see here we have 0 0.7 for uh, awful and ugly. So this is a pretty, pretty similar word, or those are pretty similar words, red and awful, not so much and ugly and red also not so much. And last but not least, let's do the same thing with the nouns. And for this, we just do it like that. And you can see that we have 1.0 for S2 and S3, as I already said, because we have piano and room, even though we have different um, adjectives. And here we have uh, piano and football and arena, which is not very similar. And here we have also piano room and football arena. So um, this is how you can do that. And you can play around with this. You can learn a little bit about it by uh, applying it to actual data sets. I actually use this in a project that I'm working on right now because I have to work with textual data and I have to extract features. I need to uh, make it numerical for a machine learning model that I'm training. So I need to take text, which you cannot feed into a machine learning model directly. And I need to extract the okay, case sentences that are quite similar sentences that belong to a certain category. And I do that by using spacey. This is something that can actually be very useful in real life in a real project. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.